Welcome everyone, Tactical Edge here, and today we have an exciting battle between me and the green one on the ladies quest tournament hosted by the ODM clan. Now, for the army builds here, I was going for the beastmen, going heavy on their vanguard component, starting with 4 Angor herds in the front line, and then 4 more Angor raiders at the back, and then a bunch of Senegals on each flank, 2 melee variant and 2 throwing axis variant, one of them the group hooves of wolf's run. On the other side, something similar though there is no regiment of renown. Now in the corner there is a single unit of Chaos Warhounds with poison and that's basically it for my Vanguard forces. At the back for the leadership we have a Bray Shaman of Traitorkin and supported by a couple Razor Gore herds. For the Empire Army, the green one is going skirmish heavy today. Two pistolias in the front, backed up by some free company militia. I assume that is also slightly vanguard deployed. And then on the flanks, a couple of spearmen with shields, providing more skirmishing firepower. Three war wagons, definitely win wagons of the Empire. Some very potent skirmishing forces on the field. Four Empire Knights to handle any beastmen mobility and charge down the lightly armored beastmen infantry. In disguise, the true kite component of the entire Empire Army, the Amethyst Wizard, coming in with Doom and Darkness to reduce enemy leadership, but more importantly, Spirit Leech. This spell simply has no counter from any factions that does not have any healing, so very deadly on any characters on my end. Now for the leadership, we have Boris Toddbringer. We have him coming in with the White Cloak of Ulrich, Crush the Weak, and of course Blood Roar for all those debuffs, especially on the leadership side. The Midden Helm Runefang also very important here, providing that passive healing to the Empire Lord. And that's it for the army builds, now let's get the battle started. With Vanguard's deployment, the game begins as soon as we load in. The Angor Raider starts unloading onto the Pistolius, but the green one here definitely has impeccable micro. Quickly pulled away the Pistolius so they took minimal damage from the Overwatch fire, while the Free Company Militia will also be pulling back. I was lagging behind with the push from the Angor Herds as I was trying to get my mobility into position, so I'm not actually microing the Angor Herds that much. Boris Toddbringer will be dropping down onto one of the Angor Herds and follow up with a charge from the Empire Knights. These Angor Herds taking massive shock damage will be quickly beaten off terrified by the presence of a griffin and on the side there the great brace shaman wild magic is receiving a little bit of spirit leech kiting unfortunately for me this is not a greatest pick against the empire army because of the lack of regeneration and healing, the Great Bray Shaman will be taking permanent damage from all the Spirit Leech. On the flanks there, Senegals and Hounds are getting into the back here, trying to whittle down my opponent's missile firepower, but the War Wagons are still free to fire and are now chipping away at my unit. On the side there, the Empire Knight got overwhelmed by two Senegal units and got quickly beaten back. They have heavy armor for sure, but their lack of melee stats means that even the lightly armored Senegals can trade very efficiently into them. But the thing is that I was once again slacking in terms of micro, busy dealing with units on other sides. For example, all these Razor Gore herds here managed to beat back the Empire Knights, but the Santagos were forgotten in the middle of a bunch of spears and now are being dragged down in melee combat and shot up by overwatching free company militia. On the side there, Senegals with throwing axes will be kiting away with their throwing axes, chipping away the health of the Empire Knight, but the war wagons are also kiting them as well. The wagons will be scooting and shooting, whittling down the Senegals over time. Now back to the middle. I'll be surrounding the Amethyst Wizard with a bunch of Razor Gore herds, hoping to snipe out the Empire Magic, but with the Empire Knights reinforcing this blob, all these Razor Gore herds are taking quite noticeable charge impact damage. Apologies for the occasional choppiness of the replay. For some reason, the Selfin Chaos Waste map always have some issues with the replays making them laggy and whatnot. Not sure why, but perhaps something to do with the coding. Right now, the War Wagons have been completely secured, free to fire at whatever target of their choosing and they're shooting at the most expensive Grookhoofs of Wolf's Run. The Grookhoofs will be suffering noticeable casualties, while the Centagos with Fearing Axes are struggling to do any damage to the War Wagons. They are chasing after the Pistoliers, trying to pick off the remaining Empire Skirmish fire, but the balance of power is already slightly against me right now, as most of the Angor Raiders at the back have been ran down by a combination of Pistoliers and Empire Knights. Picking so many missile infantry is definitely a mistake on my end, because I do not have enough assets to protect them from the charge of Empire Cavalry. At the same time, the Great Bray Shaman is down to half health. Despite the Spirit Leech doesn't have the most burst damage, it is consistent and unavoidable, making it a very good tool to deal with any lords without any healing. 
Right now, the Amethyst Wizard is busy chasing down my Santagos with Frank Axes, but he will soon return back to the middle and continue to slowly but steadily Spirit Leech my Lord to death. Of course, Boris himself also took some damage now with one quarter of HP gone, but he does have his healing. The Minden Helm Rune Fang providing that regeneration, that means I either have to snipe him out immediately with burst damage, or I have to work through his entire HP bar plus his healing cap. On the side there, a free company militia is being chased down by my mobility. I now do have more mobility than my opponent, so I can afford peeling them off to hunt down my opponent's routed units. The thing is that my leadership, the Great Brave Shaman of Wild Magic, is getting lower and lower in terms of HP. Pretty much the next Spirit Leech can finish him off, and he is still yet to use up all his magic. He did some nice damage, 1300 gold worth. That's quite a bit of value, but still not quite enough to carry his own weight. Especially I could still use a few more Traderkins to work down Boris' health. Now Boris is being tied down by Sentinels, but the Empire Knights are here to bail him out. Quickly charging in and the Sentinels are terrified by the presence of the Griffin once again. In the sky, the Amethyst Wizard on his Pegasus is swiftly approaching the Great Bray Shaman. And one more Spirit Leech and my Great Bray Shaman will be gone and there it goes. One final spell draining away all his remaining health and I could not do a single thing about it. So there goes my spellcaster and leadership and putting me on a massive back foot. I still have some Santagos with Frank Axes but nowadays for some reason the um, skirmishing mode are not as responsive as the skirmishing mode before. So the Santagos can't actually be auto kited. Unfortunately my micro isn't as good as my opponent the green one and the Santagos were caught in melee for a few seconds before extracting themselves from the engagement. The Empire Knight right now is being countercharged by two units of Sentinels and will be overwhelmed, but Boris is here, striking down Beastman as he charges in. And on the far side here, I'm still trying to shut down the War Wagons, but all of them are still online, four models on every single unit. They only took some HP damage, so they still have full firepower, and I am running out of options to deal with them for now. There are still some Sentinels and Razor Gores roaming around, but with the skirmishing fire shooting at the um, pursuing unit, these pursuing units will be taking enough damage and eventually will be routed, especially when they are guarded by a bunch of pistoliers and perhaps some returning Empire Knights on the field. Or perhaps there are no more returning Empire Knights? I guess that's good news for me. While over here, Boris Toddbringer is tied down by a bunch of tentacles right now. The thing is, Boris with his heavy armor and self heals, he is not taking that much damage in melee, so I can't really rely on the tentacles to deal with him. Instead, I'll be pulling in the Angor Raiders, but for some reason they are obstructed, so they are actually walking towards Boris Toddbringer instead of standing back and firing, while the Senegal's being peeled off is terrified by Boris' presence and will be disabled for a while. Some Empire Knights returning and will be charging straight into the routing Senegal's, and now I'm running out of options to shut down Boris. He is going after the Angor Raiders now. I do have some Senegal's with throwing axes to shoot their axes point blank into Boris, but Boris just charges straight through the Angors and getting onto the center goals with throwing axes and now starting picking off those unit models. On the far side there, the war wagons continue to pick away my pursuing units. One of them is being shut down, but I am running out of options really to shut them down right now. All my center goals and warhounds are routing in the skies. Boris is roaming the battlefield and just dropping onto whatever regroup units I have. Most of the center goals are depleted now, meaning that they can't hold in melee combat as long as usual. At the same time, the Spirit Leech kiting has resumed as the Amethyst Wizard chased down my Great Bray Shaman has finally returned and continuing to cast spells. For example, the Centagos right here being hit by the Spirit Leech is now losing unit models and some very valuable ammo. Unable to actually burst down Boris Toddbringer is my biggest loss in this game. Probably the one thing deciding the entire battle, I'm still fighting back, but the Senegals are being counter skirmished by the war wagons, taking losses as they are trying to approach the Empire characters to whittle them down with their throwing axes. I still have some missiles left, especially the Angor Raider still being very healthy, but I don't have anything to stop Boris or the Amethyst Wizard from diving down and shutting down the Angor Raiders. We'll be going into Phosphor here now as I'm trying my best to pick off my opponent's routed units, trying to prevent them from coming back and slowly push back my balance of power, but the Spirit Leech is just so annoying right now. Especially given how tattered my Centagos are, they just can't take much damage from the Spirit Leech. With the death spell breaking all these Sentinels, army losses is triggered and my opponent, the green one, will be taking the victory of this battle.
GG to my opponent, the green one, and with his victory in this battle, he is winning the last battle in the best of five between me and him, advancing into the semi-finals of the Ladies' Quest tournament. Now for the army performances here, the throwing axes did pretty well on my end. Unfortunately, they were being constantly pressured by Pistoliers, War Wagons, and Empire Knights. Some of them took quite a bit of damage throughout the battle and with the death of the Great Bray Shaman. The leadership of the Senegal simply wasn't able to hold up against Boris Toddbringer's leadership debuff and also the constant spirit leeches of the Amethyst Wizard. As for the melee Senegals, one of them did really well, the others not so much. As the skirmish fire from the war wagons was just a bit too much for them and also the heavy armor of the Empire Knights means that their damage isn't the most efficient. However, the Razor Gore Herds with their armor piercing trait they did do more damage against the armored cavalry and was able to earn back quite a bit of value. As for the rest of the army, the hounds didn't do too much here and the Angor raiders, one of them earned back their value, the others not so much as I did not have the assets to protect them from all the empire mobility and Boris Toddbringer himself. The Angor herds mostly got ran down by the empire army so not much to say about them. And the great bray shaman did some okay damage but there's still a lot of magic left in the reserves and I was not able to use them all up against the Empire. Having a Lord that doesn't have the healing to counteract the Spirit Leech kiting is definitely a big issue on my army build. If I had switched to Morgor the Shadow Gave, perhaps I would have a better chance. Now for the Empire Army here, the War Wagons, or known as the Wind Wagons, did very solid damage over the course of battle. Empire Knights also charging down a lot of my lightly armored units. However, some of them got overwhelmed by Centagors, so they didn't do too much damage. Pistolius did a solid job due to the lack of armor on the Beastman Army. Free Company Militia didn't do too much here, one of them earned back their value, the others not so much. Their spears though got quite a bit of good trade against my mobility, all of them being large targets got hit hard by the bonus versus large on the spears. Aim of this wizard did some pretty solid damage over the course of battle using auto spirit leeches and Boris Toddbringer carried the game here, took a lot of damage, not doing too much damage in return, but his abilities Blood Roar and Crush the Weak were key in routing off my units early with those leadership debuffs. Anyways, that's it for today's battle, I hope you enjoy it and if you want to see more Total War Warhammer multiplayer action, be sure to subscribe to my channel and keep an eye out for new video uploads. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Itch, signing out.